session, we're going to be doing some artwork. And for that artwork, we're going to be using our drawing skills. In art at school, you drew an image of Tower Bridge in London. And we're going to stick with the bridge theme today. We're going to do a drawing of Iron Bridge in Shropshire. The reason I've chosen Iron Bridge is because it goes over the River Severn, the river that we were learning about in geography. So where are we going to start? First thing you're going to need is a plain piece of paper and a pencil. I'm going to say don't worry about a rubber because any mistakes that you make you won't see at the end because you're going to be going over it with a pen at the end anyway. So we're going to start off by making a mark on the paper in the centre towards the top here and in the centre of the paper here. Now this one is going to be the vanishing point for your river. It's where the river's going to look like it's going off into the distance. And we're going to do, it doesn't have to be a straight line, but we're going to do a line to the corner of our paper there and a line just above the corner of the paper there. It doesn't need to be a straight line because it's going to be the river bank and river banks aren't perfectly straight. The next lines we're going to put in is the top of the bridge here to here. Now we want that to be on a slight angle. We don't want it to be straight across. We want it to be going down slightly, but not too much. So we want it to end up about here. And the same on the other side right there. The next thing I'm going to put in is some of the bushes that go along the side of the river here and the same on the other side. This gives us some starting points for us to start drawing the structure of our bridge. Again, because they're going to be trees and bushes and foliage, we don't want them to be perfectly straight at the moment. We'll add the details in right at the end. Next thing we're going to put in is we're going to put in some pillars that hold the structure of the bridge up. Now on this side, it's going to come up to about here. If you're not confident about drawing straight lines, do them in pieces like this. means that you don't have to do it all at once. Okay. Once you've got those three lines in, I'm going to say put another line here and here. You don't need to do the same on the other side for that one. Then we're going to put another small line in here and take each side of the bridge over to there and there. Now these are the main starting points and we can start to fill in the main structure of the bridge as we go. So I'm going to use this side first of all. Now on this side of the bridge you've got a stone structure which is bricked and it comes out like this down to about there and across. And you can see my pencil line's a little bit heavier this time, just because it's a main line rather than a guide line. Over here, this one comes up slightly there and then across slightly here. I'll just make those lines a bit heavier so you can see them on camera and to show that I've defined those lines now, they're going to be final lines. At the top in the centre here, we're going to have a square with two lines that hold it down. This is the centre of the bridge. And on the bridge, it's actually got a flower detail like this. Some of you might have been to Iron Bridge actually and been across it and seen it close up. It was built in 1779 and it's actually famous for its intricate ironwork and patterns 
which is what we're going to concentrate on drawing next. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at putting the main archway in that goes all the way across from here to here. So we're going to do a small square in the middle where the arches are joined and then lightly, because I don't know if I'm going to get it right first time, lightly I'm going to bring the archway over here. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Good thing about Iron Bridge is that the structure's symmetrical, so whatever you do on one side, you pretty much need to do on the other. So once you're sure that's where you need it to be, you can tidy that line up a bit. And tidy it up over there. And I'm just going to make that into the beam that it actually is. And again, if you're not confident doing the lines straight away, just feather those lines and do a little bit at a time. And take your time with it as well. The good thing about art is that usually the longer it takes, the better it's going to be. Okay, I'm going to put another iron archway in, which goes from here down to here. So I'm just going to practice with my pencil first so I can get a feel for where I want the line to go. So it's going to go from there down to the ground here. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Again, I'm just going to practice where I want my pencil to go before I actually start drawing it. I'm just going to do it lightly first. I'll go over it a bit heavier when I'm sure that it's in the right place. Let's have a look, see if I'm happy with that. Yeah, not bad. So don't worry about any of these lines that might need tidying up. I'm not going to rub them out now because I'm still drawing. I don't want to make any smudges on my paper. Now in between these two archways that you've just done, I'm going to do another one. So we follow the same curve. And follow it through like so again as i said put those lines in quite lightly to begin with and then you can shore them up once you've got them in the right place Okay, so the next section I'm going to do is there's an iron post on this side that goes to the first part of the iron arch there. So we're putting that in, goes down to there, up to here, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Because remember I said, whatever we do on one side of iron bridge, we usually have to do on the other side as well. from there to there and it goes over the other archway structures and there's a couple of horizontal bars that come across here and down here we're going to do the same on the other side we want it to be roughly in the same place so I'm just going to measure across like that and then at the top, we've got a circular shape in the corner here, and you've got one the same over here. So 
and said any mistakes that you've made with your pencil lines don't worry about them because you can rub them out right at the very end now at the top in between here and here you've got pointed shape that comes down like that another iron bar that comes down here iron bridge as you can probably tell from its name was made completely of cast iron it was actually the first bridge to be made of cast iron in the world so it's quite famous worldwide for how it was made at the time right i'm happy with that yes that's looking quite good so what we're going to put in next is there's some metal bars that come across here so we're going to pop those in i'm going to start with the inner part here and here first I'm going to try and keep it fairly symmetrical and they're just bars that come in like that and they actually curve outwards a little bit they're not perfectly straight so we don't want them too curvy at the same time we don't want them dead straight. Notice how I haven't used a ruler for any of this drawing at all. Drawing freehand will give a better impression of the bridge, I think. Some of those will go behind the structures that we've already drawn in so you might need to show that and then we're going to join those up there and there as well and the same on the other side Now, in the middle of those structures, just to show the intricacy of the bridge, we're going to put the shapes that are on the actual bridge in like this. Now, we put the details in at the end of our drawings. Now we've got the main structure, we can start to think about those details now. You might be wondering, well, what's she going to do with these grass banks and the river? We're going to do that right at the very end once we've actually got the bridge drawn and in place. On the real iron bridge, these actually almost look like chain links. When you're drawing, I always find, rather than trying to think about making something look absolutely photographic, break things down into pieces and look at the shapes. Take on a drawing shape by shape rather than thinking about what it should be looking like at the end. Any piece of artwork that you do needs to be built up gradually. It's never going to look perfect right at the start. Okay, so we've got the main metal structure done of our bridge now. We're going to look at the pillars that come here and follow the riverbank. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to take a line and it's going to come out here and here like so and it's going to follow the same angle that you've drawn the river in and then you're going to bring it down vertically like this to get the right perspective and take it back straight like this so you've created like a 3 3D box here and here those are actually the stone structures that the bridge is built into now just to give it a little bit more depth we're going to add the other side of the bridge 
and he's got two iron rails that come down this side and this side. Now these are going to be a bit thinner because they're a bit further in the distance. I'm going to bring them down to there. And there. And I'm just going to squeeze another one in the middle on either side. And this is just to show that the bridge is 3D and it actually goes underneath here and here. So we've got those details in now. We're going to look at the fence that goes across here. Um, we're going to make some thicker pil pillars. They're actually like iron pillars that go intermittently along here. I'm going to use my pencil a bit thicker just to show those there. And I've actually got some points on top of these thicker ones. I'll do the same going across here. All the way to the other side. I'm going to get them roughly evenly spaced. On this side of the bridge, we've actually got um, another archway that you can almost see here and here. And we've got the same, almost like bike spokes that we see here. And we can put that pattern in as we did with the main part of the bridge here. Okay, now in between these thick iron posts, we're going to do the thinner ones. We're just going to use a thin, light pencil line vertically going in between them to show that this is the fencing across the top of the bridge. And I'm going to make that line where the footpath is of the bridge. I'm going to make that line a little thicker, just so that you can see that. I forgot to do the fencing here, so we'll just fill that in. Okay, let's have a look at what we need to do next. So this here and this here are actually brickwork structures. Now, we're not going to spend our time drawing out hundreds and hundreds of bricks. What we actually want to do is give the illusion that, the, that this is made of brick. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a few bricks here and there. So I'm going to draw some horizontal lines in patches like this. Just every now and then, on that side that I know is a stone structure. And I'm going to fill in patches of bricks. And that way, we actually end up with an illusion of bricks without having to draw every single little brick on that structure. Otherwise, you might be there for a long time. And in the background, we're going to have some more bricks, but this time they're going to be at an angle. But again, we don't want to draw lots of bricks. We're just going to do a few here and there. And the bricks are a bit smaller there because they're going back into the distance. Same with the stonework down here. We're just going to add a few bricks but watch your lines, they need to come at the same angle here and here, otherwise they'll look a bit strange. 
And the same over this side, follow the angle of the river to do your brickwork here. Just remember these lines do need to be vertical though when you're filling in these pieces. And we're going to do the same over on this side. We're just going to do some patchwork sections of brick. Okay, now that's the main structure of our bridge completed. We need to think about what's going on around the bridge. So in the distance over here, in the background, we know that we've got trees and plants and bushes that line the riverbank there. And, that and you're going to bring them up here. Again, make sure that they're quite wiggly lines. And I don't join those lines up. We want to make them look a bit more realistic so we're going to add some lines in just to give the shapes and the impression that this is actually trees and especially down by the river bank you don't want it to look like a straight line because as you know from geography ri rivers meander they're not straight like canals So that's nicely given the impression that that's foliage and plant life. And we're going to do the same here, except down in the foreground, right at the front, those lines are going to look a bit bigger because they're right next to us. So not going to add too much detail here because we don't want it to take away from the detail that we've actually got on the bridge that we've already put our time into doing. Really we want the bushes and the plant life to actually draw attention to the bridge rather than the other way around. Okay, now to make the river look like it's going off into the distance we're going to add some horizontal lines. Now those lines at the foreground, right at the front, are going to be quite wide apart, like so. Not going to get too close together. But as we move to the middle ground, which is this part of the drawing here, those lines are going to get a little closer together. And as we move up into the distance in the background, those lines are going to get really close together. And it just gives the impression of the river going off into the distance. So now we've got that far, you can take a pen. It can be a handwriting pen, a, felt, a thin felt tip pen. It could even be a biro. Um, and we're going to go over these lines that we've already drawn, just to tidy it up a bit. So when you do go over in a pen, always start at the top of your drawing and bring your pen down. That way, you're not going to smudge it with your hand. Doesn't matter if you're left-handed or right-handed, the chances are you could smudge it if you don't start right at the top. So I'm going to start with the bridge coming across here. I'm going to put those thick posts in. And I'm not going to colour them with the pen, I'm actually going to use lines just to give the illusion of it being coloured, the effect of the fact that it's actually being coloured, but I've not actually coloured it in really.
And because you're going over this in pen, at the very end, you will be able to use your rubber and rub out all the pencil lines. Don't, so don't worry that you're not going over them necessarily exactly. I'm going to make this line a bit thinner. Like working with a pencil, even if you're working with a pen, the lighter you press with the pen, the thinner the line will be. I'll show you with a thicker line. So this line, I want quite thin, whereas this, I want a bit heavier. And you can see that it makes a thicker line, even with a pen, Not that's not necessarily just true of pencils. Now I want these to look fairly thin, so, Just going to put them in like this. I'm not going to worry that some of them haven't come to the end of here, end of this line here, because I want to give the illusion of those railings being up high from where the artist would be standing if they were standing here drawing it. We also want to make them look a lot thinner than these darker posts that we've put here. Okay, so I'm going to come over to this side. I'm going to go over this brickwork that I did over here. I like the detail that you can get on with a pen drawing. Our tower bridge drawings were done on black paper so you couldn't really see the details in them as well as you can here. So it is a bit different from the Tower Bridge drawings that we did at school a few weeks ago. and keep your hand nice and steady for these. And so if you're not confident in doing a straight line all the way down, do it in pieces. That way you can just check every now and again that your lines are in the right place. As you get more confident, you will be able to do those lines all in one. to give that 3D effect now that part needs to be going off that way. Okay, let's put this side of the bridge in. I think I'm going to work on this side first and then I'm going to move over to that side. As you can see, I'm starting towards the top of the bridge and I'm working my way down. These bits I want them to look like they're a continuation of the ones here and here. So I'm not going to draw those lines in there. That's, that was just my guideline.
and I'm going to fill these bits in here. This was the main arch that I started off with. So to go over it, I've worked my way down to that part. And we've got our other bars that come in here. And another one that comes down in the middle here. Okay, so I'm going to do stonework here that the bridge is built into. Put my brickwork in, remembering that that brickwork follows the angle of the river as well. And we're going to put this side of the river in. Notice how for this foliage that I'm doing here, I'm not doing it in one continuous line. We want it to look a bit more realistic than that. I want it to make it look like it's individual trees and bushes. And the sides of Iron Bridge are quite steep. The riverbanks are because it was actually built into a gorge. We want to sh try and show that that's quite steep. Watch it up there. So now I've got that side done, I'm going to move on that side again, working, toward, working towards the bottom. I forgot myself a little bit there and gone, gone into the bushwork, but that should be fine. I'm going to add those sections in. Now this bit here, I'm going to add some really tiny little lines because this bit here actually sticks out. So we want to try and show that these thin bits either side are actually built further back. So we want to give the, the illusion of that in our drawing. So we're just going to add a bit of shading here and darken that bit up. I'm actually just using tiny little lines with my pen there. And even if you're using a biro pen, a blue, a red, a purple, you should still be able to show this. You can actually draw and do with anything doesn't have to be a pencil. I usually say do your main drawing in pencil first because if you do make any mistakes you can rub them out at the end. Okay, so we'll move on to the ironwork of the bridge. make a few mistakes in your original drawing this is where you can tidy them up as well I said you don't have to do them all in one We're going to do the same on this side as we did on the other side. We're going to keep that bit in the middle so it looks like they're joined.
middle section of, of the archway in and then put that first section in that we drew right at the start. You should be able to start seeing that build up and then we're going to put our back archways in. There. And there. Just going to put a few lines here to show that's the underneath of the bridge. It just adds a bit of shade show that's to go the underneath and we've got this section we need to get in To our final part, just making sure we've got everything covered. Final part over here. Now, if you're following along with this, then feel free to pause the video where you feel that you need to stop and start it, watch a bit, draw a bit. And hopefully you should end up with some really good attempts at drawing this without even being there. Okay, once you've got those main details in there, you can take a rubber and starting at the top, because that's where you started, you can start and rub those pencil lines out. And this is where it didn't really matter if you made any mistakes in the main part of the drawing because now you're not going to be able to see them. shaking the camera about a bit there as well so I apologize I just realized that I've forgotten to put in the ripples on my river so don't worry if you forgot to go over something because it's easy enough to fill that in with your pen afterwards now remember those ripples as they go further back should be getting closer and closer together to show the perspective and that this part is closer than that part. And I think that's pretty much finished. Now what you decide to do with it from there, I'm going to say is completely up to you. You might decide to add some colour to it. You might decide to have a look up at Iron Bridge Online and see what colour trees and branches. If you wanted autumn trees, you could make them orange and browns. If you wanted it in the summer, you could have it all lush and green. It's totally up to you. You might decide to leave it as a pen drawing, which is fine as well. It's, it's your artwork, so it's up to you to what you decide to do with it. I hope you've enjoyed that today. It's been a bit different from the other videos you've been looking at over the last week. Um, I'll be looking forward to see what you do with them and maybe you can bring in some into school when we come back. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.